Hi, my name is Matt Forbeck. I'm here to respond to the interview questions that Wynn Alexander sent me over YouTube. Good to see you again, Wynn. It has been a long time, like you mentioned. I always do remember working with you and having a good time with it back in the Books from the Pinnacle days. Um, we've had a lot of water going to the bridge since then, both of us, I'm sure. So you asked me a number of questions. I'm going to try to run down them in some kind of order for you. First of all, you asked me about uh, a number of the projects I've worked on uh, with five different companies, Fantasy Flight, Mongoose, Paizo, White Wolf, and Wizards of the Coast. And I'll give you a brief summary of those as I can remember off the top of my head. Uh, for Fantasy Flight, I worked on a game called Dragon Star. I was brought in to work on that with Greg Benage. Uh, it was a role-playing game that they did, a D20 game, that combined dragons and science fiction. So it was essentially a fantasy or science fantasy game. Uh, it came out for the D20 system, like I mentioned, sometime in the early part of the last decade, maybe 2002. And it did pretty well, I understand. They did a number of supplements for it. I haven't done anything with them since, although I do like the guys up there quite a bit. Uh, Mongoose, I did one project for Mongoose that was the Slayer's Guide to Orcs. And that was a little short 32-page project that I did about uh, the habitats and lifestyle of orcs in the fantasy universe. That was another D20 book. Um, I was going to do something larger with them at one point, something called Shadow Knight, which is going to be a, a kind of a shotguns and sorcery type of background and setting and campaign world for Dungeons and Dragons for third edition. But uh, after I'd already cut the deal with them and I was about to start writing, my wife became pregnant with quadruplets and that put a crimp in my writing for a couple of years at least. And I never did get back to it. By the time I talked to them about it after that, the D20 market had moved on. I may come back and revisit it at some point, but I haven't had a chance to do so yet. Uh, for White Wolf, I've written a few things over the years. I wrote a number of short stories for them. Notably, I wrote a short story called, I believe it was Reconciliation in the Beast Within. Wait a minute, was that right? Possibly. Anyhow, that was about a, uh, a vampire priest working at Marquette University in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And that was in the first vampire fiction anthology ever, The Beast Within. I also did a follow-up short story to that um, that was set in San Francisco where the same character ends up being Oscar Wilde. And then I did a third story for them for... The Splendor Falls, which was their Changeling anthology, yes. And uh, more recently for them, they asked me to do a quick adventure for them for a product called Ghost Stories, which was a uh, the first adventure book for the New World of Darkness that came out a few years back. Um, let's see, now on to Wizards of the Coast. Oh, sorry, skipped over Paizo. Paizo I only did a few things for. I worked on a couple of different articles for their Dragon Magazine, Back when I was doing um, novels for Wizards of the Coast, I did a series of children's novels. I started out the Knights of the Silver Dragon, which was their first young adult series that they did, uh, created exclusively for that at Wizards of the Coast. And I wrote the first book in that one, and I wrote a couple other books in the series later on. But I wrote up uh, <clears throat> an article on that for Dragon Magazine. And then also I did the second Eberron trilogy, coming after Keith Baker, who's the man who created Eberron in the first place. And he, uh, or after that, I, for that I did another article for Dragon Magazine that describes some of the things, and I believe I did a short story for that as well. Let's see, that covers Wizards of the Coast a little bit, actually. I've done a number of things for Wizards over the years. Um, I also did the Stronghold Builder's Guidebook for 3rd edition. I did Races of Faroon, I did a small part of that. I did The Unapproachable East, um, and a number of other things I'm probably forgetting. But they're a good company to work with. I've always enjoyed seeing my friends over there and having a good time with them. Um, after that, you talked about leverage. Yeah, I worked on the leverage role-playing game. I didn't have a lot to do with it. What happened is I'm a friend of John Rogers, who is one of the creators of leverage, and I've known him for a few years. And when I and my family and I were all huge fans of the show. We watch it every chance we get. And when I found out that the guys were Margaret Weiss Productions were going to be doing the video or the role-playing game, I emailed them and said, ooh, 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 do you have any space for somebody? Could I help you out with that? And he said, sure. And so Cam Banks, who was the guy who was running the company's production at the time, uh, emailed me and said, sure, Matt, what can we get you involved in? And they had me write a chapter or two on uh, mostly about how to run games like this and the different tropes that go into heist stories and uh, the way to actually properly, properly structure a leverage game. I didn't do too much with the Cortex system. They specifically kept me away from the mechanics. Uh, because they already had a great team in place for that by the time they had announced it. They just needed somebody to explain to the, uh, their readers about how story mechanics might work best for the game. Um, you also asked about Ghost of Ascalon. That's a novel I co-wrote with Jeff Grubb. 
And Jeff is a good buddy of mine. He's uh, a member of the Illiterates, which is my writer's group that we have branches of here in Wisconsin and Seattle and in other parts of the country as well. And uh, Jeff I've known for many years since his, the days I was doing RPGA stuff for Marvel superheroes uh, back when I was a kid. I'm going to stop and take a drink of water. And Jeff is now the head lore person or lore master for Guild Wars, which is a massively multiplayer online role-playing game produced by ArenaNet and published by NCSoft. And uh, when they wanted to have some novels written for this, they came up with a list of writers. And they selected me to be the guy to write their first novel for the world. Uh, my brief was to basically come up with a story that covered the entire 250-year span between Guild Wars and the sequel to Guild Wars 2, which is hopefully coming out soon. Uh, the date has not been announced for yet, but it's going to be uh, released when it's done. And they're very good about making sure they put high-quality work into their uh, games and do the best they possibly can with them. So we'll just have to wait and be patient along with everybody else. I did get a chance to play it for an hour or two uh, over at the NCSoft offices, at the ArenaNet offices when I was out for PAX last year. But I haven't seen much of it since then. And everything I have seen online looks fantastic. But I started writing the novel for them. And then Jeff Grubb, um, the problem with writing a novel for this was because hitting, it's a game that's still in development, right? Which means that it's not like trying to hit a moving target. It's more like trying to hit an exploding target. And there were literally things that were changing in the game as I was writing the novel on a daily basis even. And Jeff being the guy who's in-house and actually in charge of a lot of the lore and reintegrating a lot of the great ideas people have into the story was the perfect person to help me out with the background material. And he ended up doing so much of this that he got a well-deserved co-writer's credit for it. Um, that novel came out in July of this year and it's done pretty well so far. It's got a number of great reviews. Um, I think Amazon's up to 46 reviews now that average out at about four and a half stars. So I'm pretty happy with that. Very pleased with it, actually. Uh, additionally, beyond that, oh, the synopsis of the story, yeah, actually about that. It's a story about a guy named Dougal Keene, who is a adventurer kind of in the Indiana Jones style, who is a tomb robber. And he goes out and tries to dig up old artifacts and then use them or sell them or whatever he can do. Uh, and he is shanghaied into helping out a group called The Vigil with finding an ancient artifact that will hopefully forge a peace finally between the Char, who are these great lion-like creatures, uh, lion men essentially, and humanity, who are the two great races in the nation, or in this continent that have been battling with each other for untold centuries. Uh, the problem is that they have a lot of other problems nowadays. They have their, the Char are fighting within, the humans are dealing with bandits and with centaurs that are fighting with them, and they have the, these massively powerful godlike dragons that are looming over everybody. If they don't manage to forge a peace between each other, eventually they're all going to get killed anyway. So this is very important for them to do. Um, and like I said, this fits in between the games Guild Wars 1 and Guild Wars 2. So if you're a fan of Guild Wars, this will give you a taste of what you're going to get in Guild Wars 2. And uh, if you're not a fan, if you don't know anything about it, this will give you a lot more information about the game so you can figure it out as you go. Let's see. Uh, you also asked about the Brave New World movie. That's something I'm working on with the guys over at Reactor 88 Studios. They're a good group of guys. Uh, we've been working on it for a while. We shot an eight-minute proof-of-concept uh, trailer that we showed off at Gen Con last year. And ever since then, we've been trying to shop the movie around. Uh, often, part of it's being held up by my lack of time for writing a script at the moment, um, which I have to blame myself for. Those guys over there have been doing a fantastic job despite that in getting things together. They also are having production another movie based on Inspectors, which is a role-playing game by Jared Sorensen, who's an excellent designer. And Inspectors is what I like to call uh, The Office Meets Ghostbusters, right? Or Slacker Ghostbusters. It's a really funny concept. Um, and Jeff Dom, or Jeff Dome, I'm sorry, wrote the original script for it, and then I, they brought me in to revise the script, so I gave it a good polish after that. Um, a lot of the characters and the structure and everything else were Jeff's. So I would just try to brush it up and, you know, help with the story structure a little bit better. And they're already shooting it right now. In fact, they showed off a 10-minute uh, piece of that at Gen Con this year, and they've been shooting it all fall ever since then. And, it's, you know, I have pretty high hopes for it. There's a great crew there. Uh, Darren Orange is doing a great job as director. And I'm really looking forward to see how it all comes together in the end. As far as the Brave New World movie, uh, again, we're hoping to get it done for next year or have it in place ready to shoot next year. We'll have to see how it goes. It's a bigger movie. One of the reasons that Inspectors came first for full production is that uh, 
the kind of movie it is, it doesn't require a huge budget, right? So we can actually shoot that on a shoestring with a lot of independent actors and directors and such. Whereas with Brave New World being a, um, a movie that demands a lot of special effects, we would need a much higher budget. So part of this is doing a good job in the inspectors so that when we go around shopping around Brave New World, people will say, oh yeah, these guys know what they're doing and they do a great job at it.